Hello everyone and welcome to this new tips and tricks series on Wild Rift. For the first episode, I have Hell's Devil himself with me, so I guess you already know him. If you don't, definitely go check him out. I will have all the links in the description. And my plan is to have a different content creator for each episode, so if you have someone to suggest, leave a comment. And by doing so, you will be entered automatically in my skin giveaway. So if you leave any comment, you will have a chance to win a skin of your choice. You can find all the details in the pinned comment. So without any further ado, let's get started. So maybe you remember that in one of Hell's Devil's video, he said that uh, items such as the Dusk Blade have hidden passives that can allow you to know when an enemy is close or hiding in a, in a bush, for example. So something I discovered is that you can actually do something similar when you play as Morgana. Because her ultimate button is usually greyed out when enemies are not nearby, but once you get near to an enemy, it lights up. But this also works for enemies that are hiding in bushes or that are invisible. So literally, any enemy that gets too close to Morgana when she has her ultimate can be detected because she will know that an enemy is close, even if they are invisible and even if they are hiding in a bush. I don't know why this is possible. I know that on PC you can do this with uh, Katarina's ultimate, for example. I tried and you cannot do it on Wild Rift. Just know that if you play Morgana or if you play against Morgana, she can know when an enemy is close to her. After 12 and a half minutes, the minion waves in the Wild Rift become buffed. So what happens is they replace one of the weak ranged minions with a cannon minion every wave. So the normal waves are two weak ranged minions and two weak frontline minions. And then after that you have two weak frontline minions, one weak ranged minion and one cannon minion. So what happens is instead of having one cannon minion and then zero, one, zero, after 12 minutes and 15 seconds it becomes two cannon minions and then one cannon minion, two cannon minions and then one cannon minion. So you're effectively making the waves stronger. This allows you to push harder. These waves are stronger and will do much more damage to the enemy's turrets. Another thing to know, by the way, if you kill the enemy inhibitor turret, it replaces one of the weak frontline minions with a very strong frontline minion. So like your waves are gonna be one strong frontline minion, one weak frontline minion, and then either one or two cannon minions. This, like, this is what makes minions incredibly powerful in the late game, and the moment that it switches is after 12 minutes and 15 seconds. So in the first episode, Hell's Devil told you that when you attack the Baron, he will inflict to you a debuff that makes you deal 50% less damage to him, and this will be applied only to the closest player. That is true, but the Baron actually has a lot more depth to it. So I will go quickly over the abilities that he has, but I will not talk in depth about them because I can literally talk about it for 10 minutes. So I will make a video especially for that. I will make a Baron guide very soon. So stay tuned for that. So the other Baron abilities are five projectiles that fall from the sky and that will follow you if you move and the projectiles deal AOE damage and actually have high damage. So you should always try to avoid them three acid pools that will damage and slow players standing inside them, so kind of like Morgana's ability, a tentacle that will knock players up in a small zone, and finally, if you keep attacking him from the back for too long, he will use a wall of spike that will hit every player standing behind him and stun them for one second, because for some reason, the Baron hates when you attack him from behind. So on top of all the abilities we talked about, which comes to 6 in total, it will also reduce your armor and magic resist each time an ability hits you. So basically the Baron is super super strong and if you want to know everything about him because I bet, I bet you that you don't know everything about him, I will see you in my Baron guide that I will try to post as soon as possible. While Aurelian Soul looks transparent in the game, he actually has quite a hard time hiding from the enemies. Reason is because of his stars. The stars that rotate around Aurelian Soul are different from anything else in the game basically. It's rotating projectiles that act like champions or minions for example, and what I mean with that is vision wise they act like minions. So if there is a star going out of a bush that you have vision over, right? Like if you're looking at a bush, normally you cannot see the champion, but you can see Aurelian Soul stars rotating around because they are their own entities and you cannot hide them. So when you're playing Aurelian Soul, be very careful with recalling in a bush close to the enemy because they can see you. You will just look very dumb and probably get killed. Usually when players want to check if an enemy is inside a bush, they will use an ability that stops once it touches its target. So for example, uh, Jinx's zap 
or zigs bombs or stuff like that. But you should know that abilities that go through enemies can also help you check if an enemy is inside a bush. And that's because when you hit an enemy that's hidden, you still see the impact animation and special effect. So that means you can actually check a bush with a lot of champions such as Zaya, Varus, Seraphine, Pantheon or Mundo or like a ton of champions. And this is even better than an ability like uh, Jinx's Zap because it means you can see multiple enemies at once with one ability because it doesn't stop on the first one hit. When you are full built in a game, on bruisers like Camille or Darius or something like that, you will be having items like Guardian Angel or Starex Gauge or Moth Marmortius, right? What you can do is if you have excessive gold, like if you have 2000 gold and you just, like the enemy just procs your Guardian Angel, you can then sell your Guardian Angel in the base and buy a different item with, an, with like a passive, like the Starex Gauge or like the Phantom Dancer or like the... Uh, Ma of Marmortius, because then you're going to be resetting the cooldown and you're able to be tankier in the next fight as well. You can do the same thing for enchantments, by the way. If you've just used an enchantment and, you know, you have a lot of gold, you can sell your existing enchantment and buy a new one. This is incredibly powerful with the teleport enchant, for example. So if you have a stasis enchant as a Lee Sin Jungle, I'm just giving you an example right now, or whatever, um, you could sell the item, buy a teleport, and quickly teleport to join your team in a team fight or to join your team in getting an objective, like the Dragon or the Baron. For some reason that I cannot explain, some champions have an indicator on themselves, like on the 3D model itself, that they have an ability that is on cooldown or off cooldown. So I have three examples that I know of. So when Yumi's passive is ready, the ball that is attached to her will be glowing with yellow, meaning that her next basic attack on an enemy champion will give her back some mana. So you can bet that when the ball is glowing, she will try to attack you. The second one is Dr. Mundo's passive. You can know that it is ready by looking at the purple outline uh, next to his level, of course. But you can also check, for some reason, that uh, the, the capsule is missing from his arm. And finally, when Vi's shield ability is ready, there will be a light that turns on on her back. So you know that when the light is off, she doesn't have her shield. When the light is on, she can use it. I agree that this is not very useful against Vi or Dr. Mundo, but I think it's actually very very useful against Yumi because every time the ball turns yellow she will try to attack you so you can take this into account and use it to your advantage by just every time the ball is yellow and she detaches you run away and you stay just out of range so you will actually annoy her a lot because she needs the mana so it's quite useful. Senna's first ability is way more useful than you may think. So while we all know that it's a really good ability because it deals damage, it applies basic attack effects, you can heal allies with it, etc. There is more to it. First of all, it's a laser. It shoots through everything. So Yasuo Windwall is not gonna stop it. Brahm's shield is not gonna stop it. Secondly, it acts like a basic attack. So what does it mean? You can hit wards with it too. So you can hit an enemy ward with it. Basically, you can do basic attack, first ability basic attack to kill a ward. But let's say you're unable to kill the enemy ward and the ward becomes invisible. You can still attack the ward. The way that you do it is you indirectly attack the enemy ward. The way that you can do it is you hit one of your wards and aim at the enemy's wards as well. And you're going to be able to hit the enemy ward and eventually kill it as well. Another thing that you can do with this ability is extend the range. This is incredibly useful in the lane as you can hit one of your allies or one of your minions or even one of your wards and then extend the range and hit the enemy with it. Really, really useful ability. So for this one, I think it is different than from the PC version of the game. But if you flash from inside a bush, the enemy will still see the flashing effect and they will still hear the flashing sound effect. So you cannot actually flash from one bush to the other without being seen. But what you can do is before you go over a wall with your flash, you can enter a bush and then use your flash. That will mean that the enemy does not see the direction that you took. They will only see the yellow effect where you started the flash, but they will not know where you landed. This is very useful when you are like entering the dry bush. And once you are inside, you flash away and you can decide to go down or up or inside the baron or dragon pit. And the enemy has no idea if they don't have vision on where you go. So it can be very good to escape and disappear and they have no idea where you went. 
There are some abilities in the game that can shoot right through Brahm's shield and Yasuo's shield. These abilities are called lasers. We already talked about Senna's first ability, but there is another thing that Senna has that can shoot through everything, which is her basic attacks. Yes, Senna's basic attacks is a laser. So if there is a Brom right in front of the enemy, you can still shoot an enemy behind the Brom while Brom is using his shield because it's a laser, it goes right through him. Other examples would be Lucian's first ability, that is also a laser, this shoots right through anything, it doesn't matter who's trying to block whatever, it's a laser so it goes right through it. And probably the most famous one would be Lux ultimate, right? You know the frustration as a Brom, you're trying to block off damage and then Lux just shoots her laser, her ultimate and destroys everyone. So that's it guys, that was 10 tips and tricks with Els Devil. Don't forget to check the first episode of the series that is on his channel. The link is below in the description or on the screen right now. And don't forget to leave me a comment below if you want to enter the skin giveaway. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.